Hey guys, Pretendosaur here, and today we are talking about Solo, a Star Wars story. Now, is it really a Star Wars film without lightsabers and the Force? I mean, let's be honest, no one really asked for this film to be made. Part of Han Solo's allure is we kind of hint at his past, but we see how that past has affected him now, and we see him as a charming scoundrel. He appears to be this morally indecisive character, but actually he always stands up for the good guys and the guys who are downbeat. And that's a big part of why we like Han, so learning how we got here is probably really low down on a lot of people's lists. And to be honest, the film starts out really slowly. Young Han Solo isn't particularly charismatic or fun and so the way the film starts out is you're supposed to care about this protagonist, you're supposed to care about how he's escaping from the cops and escaping from his upbringing but because he isn't particularly interesting or likeable yet that first part of that film, the first act, is actually quite hard to swallow. But as he starts collecting the little elements of his personality, and they're dotted throughout the film, you see him grow, and you almost literally see him pick up these individual steps in his personality, it starts to become really, really fun. And I think ultimately that's how you should approach this film. I kind of went in going, hmm, is this going to be Star Wars enough for me? But once you kind of put that to the side and you just sit there and take it for what it is, a really fun kind of action film set in the Star Wars universe, everything kind of falls into place a little easier. I actually don't know anything about Han's actual origin story. I've not read any of the books. The films obviously don't really go into it that much. And there's a large part of it um, in this film where he you know, goes to the army and does all that. I didn't like the army section. I thought that was a little throwaway. I get, you know, narratively he has to meet Barrett, Woody Harrelson's character, somehow. I just feel like that is never really spoken about before in Han's life. I much prefer a story where he discovers who he is through the smuggling and from those really like downbeat beginnings as opposed to being enlisted in the army. But I mean, it's not the biggest crime in the world. And his story with the group is really, really strong. Because you know where the film starts and where it's going to end, the success of the film lies in how it draws the line between the two. And even though I wouldn't have agreed with all the other parts of those twists and turns, Turns, the whole thing does feel very, very sensible. I loved how they canonified the castle run from being, you know, 12 parsecs being a time, which obviously clearly it isn't, from picking up unrefined hyperfuel to then going and refining it instead of going through this massive twist and turns of the maelstrom. He's cut the castle run distance by a large margin. I think that's quite fun and it, it kind of makes peace with its difficult history and that difficult part of his writing. And there are tons of little moments as well that work really well. I loved how he met Chewie. I think the way that they came together felt really natural. What do you think? I feel like their rapport as they grew felt really, really good. Obviously the fact that, you know, Chewbacca never really says anything that we can understand. And it's all told through Han Solo. It's always really fun to see that dynamic very, very early on. I think Woody Harrelson's character is really, really fun. I really like his mentor and yet hardened smuggler style. I actually think he would have made a fantastic little younger Han Solo and he would have made a great mentor. I would have loved to have seen more mentoring going on in the film. I think what they wanted from this film was, you know, these two large jobs ends up sculpting Han Solo forever. And I think you know, if Han Solo really did exist, I think that character would have been developed over far more heists. But for what it is, I think it works really well. I really did not like Amelia Clark's character. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Amelia Clark. I do think that she has far too many kind of awkward, wistful looks that are, they're ambiguous, but I think when you are trying to play the ambiguity of are they a good person or are they a bad person, in each scene you have to pick. In this scene, she's going to pretend to lean evil to kind of push back Han, and then in other scenes she has to kind of lean into Han and her old life, and I feel like 
in those scenes that, you know, build up the ambiguity. Instead, we have what feels like indecision. And I think that is just, for me anyway, down to her performance as opposed to the writing of the character. I also really didn't like Amelia Clark's character when she kept saying, you don't know what I've been through. I think if you put those words into a script, you need to rewrite that whole character. If you're going to hint at a character's past, either show me why they're cool now and hint at what happened, or just tell me what happened. Don't do this thing where you're playing with the audience and saying, oh, you don't know what I've been through, but then be too lazy to actually write it. Also, the villain was quite weak. I don't think the villain had enough going for him. I do like the fact that he was covered in scars, but we never really address why he's covered in scars. And the fact that he they glow red and his eyes glow red when he gets really angry. I like that they don't address it. I think there are plenty of things that don't need to be addressed in Star Wars and kind of be left as a little interesting question at the end of the film but I don't think his motivations and the pressure he applied to the stakes was big enough I never felt like at every juncture the question isn't will they won't they make it it's more like yes or no will they die at the end but how Han's relationship with Chewie develops how he ends up getting the Millennium Falcon how his dynamic with Lando Calrissian is developed. I mean, for me, that is probably one of the most earned relationships I think we've had in the new Star Wars films. It felt really genuine on their kind of tit for tat, kind of cocksureness. Han Solo as well, I can't remember his name, but he is fantastic. He's really, when he's fully Han, he does that kind of fake cocksure smile when he's got absolutely nothing to be sure about, but he's kind of bluffing anyway. He pulls that off really, really well. And I think definitely as he progresses through the film, he starts to really channel that Harrison Ford kind of feel. I think the ending of the film leaves us at a really interesting point of the Star Wars new universe. They had laid a lot of groundwork here for what seems like a possible sequel. We have Barrett's daughter, who's a leader of some sort of rebellion or joining a rebellion. And we have the Crimson Dawn who haven't really been mentioned in any other media. So I'm not sure whether they're gonna go for that, whether Amelia Clark's character is gonna play a big role in that. And obviously we had Darth Maul. So I don't know if they want to then transplant him into the main storyline. Han Solo was obviously only gonna really exist as a separate entity. Will they then tie off some of the strands into the main story to kind of bring it all together? I don't know. And for me personally, I would really like it for it to be self-contained. I loved Rogue One because it's much more historical than Han Solo is in the sense that it's kind of revealing these events as opposed to Han Solo where, you know, the writers are actually creating events to happen. But Rogue One remained itself. Apart from the plans that got taken, we know nothing about these heroes who died for it. And that's a really important part of that story. You know, we should never have to see Forrest Whitaker's character again or hear the name Jyn Erso ever again because that was that moment in time. I don't know if we should see a lot of the other characters from this moment in the new films, but knowing that Disney now own this property, it's more than likely going to happen, especially with these films where so many of the characters could go on their own storyline or at least have some part in the main story, but we'll see. So what do you think about the solo film? Do you think they're gonna move parts of that film into the main film? Did you enjoy it? Do you like the history that they made for Han Solo? Let me know down in the comments down below. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.